cool. Hold on, I gotta get my I gotta get my glasses on. This is already uh one extra moa per week in the hold on okay all right hey guys what's up and welcome to the channel i am the shotgun shogun and it is wednesday my dudes we didn't have a live stream today because well i woke up early anyways and it's because i can't i can't read which is really weird because i'm gonna read the patch notes to you uh and chat is already so 45 silver transmits weekly uh whale patches okay fantastic and actually silver transmits are not hard to get just get yourself a guider aether anyways update today is we just recently had the tournament fantastic stuff we're going to be getting more information i'm sure as everybody already knows the fa the fire cecilia side story was the prelude prelude into chapter three which is i i called that one actually uh because i I mean it was pretty obvious from the summer into everything else right so anyways the third guild war season the endeavor season is open and now that i see endeavor i want to go check out more i want to go look at watch more of the fights in my hero academia where an endeavor like runs up the side of the building and then just like chunks that dude right in the face uh but that's just a typical morning for me anyways but in guild war endeavor season is going to open which means that wait hold on are we going to get reset back to normal and then fight like level 15 people that i'm going to feel bad for bullying probably but it's going to start on the 22nd fantastic um you know another another season where the shogunate shall try to rise to the top 20 um we'll see how things go with that but we're gonna get some some frames i actually kind of like the blue the blue frame shogunate let's let's shoot for f like top four to 30 because i like this like little blue ribbon looking frame here um so that's not bad we're also going to get our frames we're going to get our ugly our ugly frame for last season fantastic stuff right here um so rewards for victory i think this is literally just the same as it always is fantastic stuff right um you know how guild wars goes uh proof of valor wait are we gonna get we can get 12 proofs of valor we're going to be getting like six more proofs of valor because that's what we need more proofs of valor right i actually don't really use my proof of valor on too many things these days uh but regardless captain shop by consuming gold uh, you'll be able to give 30 energy yo we can give gold out now finally something to use all of that like bazillion gold that is sitting in your guild bank just doing nothing right hold on let me go check real quick how much i have in our guild bank we've got uh almost 200 million gold now if only they would put something in there for me to use the million proof of heroes uh that we have in there proof of courage proof of heroes proof of courage is on would be fantastic uh so we knew do we have no duplicate classes what new world arena mock battle mode you know what okay so hold on this is actually this is actually really really pog right because this means that they're going to be adding a lot more different modes into world arena that means eventually maybe three star only nat three star only mode that is going to be super interesting so that means the world arena entry conditions will be adjusted following the update heroes of the same class cannot be selected that's actually pretty pog dude i am kind of hype about that uh rip to all of my built thieves but i mean i think this will be kind of neat right and this will actually open it up to other like modes for tournaments so that yeah you can just be like hey this is all you can use you have to use one of each of these things um and i think that that's kind of cool you know that it shows that they're throwing other neat things out there like i said if they ever do like a three star and under mode i'm gonna live there because those are my favorite units in the game to use op stuff right and i think that that's kind of cool they're gonna have different battle rules um 
you know, they might have it so that uh, I don't know what they're going to have. Right. Uh, but I think that that's going to be kind of cool. Select a different hero class in the band pick stage total of six. Uh, the battle will take place with four heroes with one band on a team. You can select uh, you cannot select more than one hero of the same class. Both players cannot select the same hero. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's normal stuff. OK, so we're going to get a Lytic banner uh, with sort of judgment. Um, OK, cool. Uh, ooh, we get a new a new artifact on the Tywin banner. OK, what is this? Uh, they've been putting out a lot of um, a lot of extra uh, artifacts and stuff like that lately, which eh, I can I'm I'm a little on the fence about. Right. Because it's like if I want this new artifact, I'm not rolling on a Tywin banner. Right. Um, but let's see what this does. Increase the defense by eight percent, removes five souls from the enemy when the cut when this what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is anti-cleave as hell, dude. Okay, okay, okay. So, Knight Artifact removes five souls from the enemy when the caster suffers an attack that hits all targets. Bro, are you seriously? This is so busted for anti-cleave. Dude, you slap this on, you know, anybody uh, like a fallen Cecilia or something along those lines. Just the night meta, dude. Imagine if you had two of these, right? Like you just put this on two knights and it's like rip all of your tag hells. This is disgustingly good, actually. Um, I, I kind of want to roll this so here's here's the problem though right here's the problem is i'm not rolling on a tywin banner but if well if i needed if i needed imprints for ml tywin maybe but i don't and so i'm not gonna roll for this which is was is feels bad but it's not limited right so one day it'll be in the shop one day i'll get spooked by it um, night meta already strong. It's just going to be stronger. This is actually disgusting because this is not only going to increase the knight's defense, but this screws. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hold on. Think about it this way, right? They can't bring in dizzy. Roman's going to screw this up. Basar is going to screw this up. Anybody with normal, just yeah you is the removing five souls is huge one of the big things that i really liked about a tywin when a tywin first came out was just the fact that he controlled souls why is assassin sid so good because he just goes oh rip all of your souls with my s3 controlling souls is huge because a lot of characters rely on their soul burn right and this is is actually disgustingly good now the problem like i said is that you do have to roll on this banner the thing with this artifact though is sure it increases your defense by 16 percent when you have this thing maxed out um but the souls don't change so you literally don't need more than one copy of this like you can just plus 15 this and put this on like two knights right and then if they try to just aoe into you with anybody ripperinos all of your souls my dude um that's gonna be actually actually busted uh if you take this in against a dizzy team or an ssb team uh they're never ever ever going to have souls um that is um nice that's actually that's actually pretty solid um i really like that actually uh as a bruiser knight player myself um i am a fan of that but i know that a lot of people uh won't right but regardless anyways uh expedition improvements some features and rules 
of the expedition will be improved and the unique buff debuff icon design will be changed. I like this one though. Don't don't change this from me. Um, okay, so before it shows the entry button for the expedition when you have a wanted flyer or when there's an expedition that is recruiting uh, after shows uh, notification dot. Please don't, please don't notification dot. I have so many notification dots literally everywhere uh and that makes me sad um but oh dude this is kind of this is kind of cool what is this stuff down here progress uh completed uh okay so results completed this icon will be displayed for expeditions that have ended regardless of success or failure uh recruiting shows you the number recruiting of uh in progress i have never actually went in here and been like bro i wonder how many expeditions that i personally have in in this so i guess this this literally doesn't do much doesn't do much for me right uh but hey you know what obtain all expedition rewards at once that actually does a lot for me i actually legitimately do like that one don't make me click on everything actually i would like it if i could just wanted poster everything boom done um improvements will be made so the players can create expeditions using wanted posters uh we'll be able to carry out one free battle what okay so that's actually really good right uh because if you can do one free battle that makes it so much easier because huh, i'll be i'll be straight up with you guys here uh a lot of times I just throw my wanted posters up and then I invite everybody else. I don't do them. And if it, if I win, I win. If I don't, I don't not my problem. And if people come in and leech, then well, guess what? I got a new spot on my friends list. All of you guys on my friends list are my expedition slaves. Uh, so now I can at least, you know, help out and I can do, you know, I can work on like the the twos or something along those lines. Or if I'm like real close to like the last to finishing it off, I can just go in and finish things off so that nobody loses their overall um their overall energy investment, right? So I think that that's actually really good because I think a lot of people did that, right? You know, why why waste your own energy when yours the one that's like, hey, let me throw this throw this out here for everybody. Uh, but let's see. So improvement to rules for expedition advice. Uh, improvements will be made so the players who have not logged into the game for three days will be removed from the expedition invite list. Uh, this is pretty good. Uh, to be fair, people who haven't logged in for three days are also removed from my friends list. So that's not too big of a deal for me, right? Uh, the rules for time attack will be removed. The re amount of basic rewards that can be obtained according to the expedition difficulty level will be adjusted. Um, that's kind of cool, right? Uh, not bad. Um, the time thing was always kind of like, eh, because you had to be like, hey, bro, boom, hey, what's up, everybody? I just put these up. Go get them done so that we can get the time attack thing. Um, lasting buff icons and designs uh, will be adjusted to make them e more easily noticeable. Okay. Japanese media pack. All right. I got Japanese voices for Tempest Surin, Holiday Euphine, Ambitious Tywin. Oh, dude, I can't wait to hear Ambitious Tywin's JP voice, bro. That's actually going to be, be, he's going to be even more anime now. Uh, that's going to be, that's going to be sweet. A uh, big deal for that. Mui, uh, Holiday Euphine will be good as well. Um, artifact re pack renewal. Okay. Uh, wasn't this one like real expensive last time? I forget. I'm not, a. I, I really don't care that much. Three times per account uh 60 dust four to five star wasn't this one i think this one's probably like 50 bucks right uh this pack i think the last time it came around was 50 bucks it seems like it would be a 50 dollar pack right uh because you get a five star artifact you get three five star four to five star ta uh tickets you get 60 dust some charms uh 800 size sky stones eh. 
I don't know about that one, honestly. Um, if you like it, cool. If not, whoa, hey, hold up. Transmit stones. We're getting more Molagoras. You know I'm always about those Molagora life, right? So before we could get one per uh, per sale period, now we're getting two per week. That's going to be, what, four more Molagoras a month? That's four more Molagoras a month if it's a month with four weeks, right? uh molagora improvements they're listening to me um the friendship thing hold on hold on so let me put this into perspective right so they gave us the friendship change right so that's basically free three free molagoras uh i don't really care if you don't like it because you had to s1 put three into your tamarin s1 literally don't care miss me with that bs this overall it's good uh, it's a good change if you don't think it's a good change I don't know what to tell you, man. But now um, you get extra Molagoras. They're doing what they can to to help things out, right? So one of the big things that you can do with for silver transmit stones, right, is sell three star penguins. Um, that's huge, right? I think that uh, a lot of people don't realize that if you just mass summon penguins with the stigma that you use from farming all month, you get tons and tons of silver transmit stones. As long as you're like 313 in your um, in your Forest of Souls, right? Not only that, there's other ways to cheat the system. If you get yourself an extra Guider Aether, you can put other Guider Aethers into that Guider Aether in order to get your silver transmit stones um, out of that. That's super, super huge. There's ways around it, right? And obviously if you're here at the YouTube channel, you can go see my Guider Aether uh, thing as well as things on the penguins as well. Not only that, but if you're a little more frugal with your silver transmit stones, um, it's not too bad. Personally, um, you don't have to buy Giga Phantasmas. You don't have to buy a lot of the stuff. I mean, I'm sitting on 170 silver transmit stones myself, uh, but I also, like I said, I mass summon and sell three star penguins. I buy the three star penguins from the side story. I sell those as well that's extra extra silver transmit stones right there's a bunch of a bunch of other ways around uh getting all that stuff so uh improvements to the probability info ui if a pack includes two types of items or more at the time of purchase of the package the ui will be improved to display the probability information for each item okay that's cool i guess um Let's see, an issue where increased combat readiness by 300% effect created by heroes remaining even after being resurrected if the hero is killed when brutal Ferris is on an offensive posture will be fixed. Okay, so that's going to be fixed. Uh, hero background settings. Improvements will be made so the players can choose the hero background using the background packs. Hey, we can finally use the background packs, boys. Nice. Uh, finally, something to use these for. Love it. Fantastic um that's cool uh lobby fixed team settings a feature where you can select a fixed team will be shown in the lobby uh will be added okay pin to lobby okay sweet that's cool so if you want if you want your fancy your specific fancy characters in the lobby you can that's a thing that you can do easy peasy pin to lobby i like that actually um, auto battle settings a feature on the uh, battle ready screen when you can where you can pre-select auto battle will be added uh, this will not only apply to uh adventure but also other bad what i don't is that really that that big of a thing i guess i guess hey whatever you know what quality of life is quality of life my man um okay hall of trial improvements uh improvements will be made so that the points and grades are displayed in addition to the player's rank um improvements will be made so the player's current rank information uh lower right hand corner improvements will be made to the current rank tab but we need more currency actually uh i can't can't really buy too much out of that uh it, it kind of sucks actually um anyways 
Uh, tutorial and story. A story will be added in the middle of the Hall of Trials tutorial. Some dialogue lines will also be changed. A button that will let you view the prologue story will be added to the main story, main scene in the Hall of Trials. This will allow players to revisit the story when they are in the tutorial. Cool. Automation tower. Uh, the icons are going to be different. Okay, sweet. Rec more recognizable. That way I know what to just burn through for charms and what I should actually like look at yeah the two weeks for one boss is pretty meh as well adventures past system and ui improvements uh okay um uh, well let's see if there's anything important in here it's just a bunch of ui improvements skin ui improvements other okay uh, new illustrations will be added to the main story for episode two chapter five two and chapter eight cool um, some typos, adjustments will be made to shorten the effects when you touch the screen as well as make it more concise. Okay, interesting. More APMs, boys. Boom. Psh, you gotta be faster when you're, when you're touching the screen and making it more concise. Improvements will be made so that players can purchase arena flags through a pop-up that's displayed when the player doesn't have enough. That's phenomenal. Not that I buy flags, but when I did buy flags because I was doing arena rushes or whatever, I was like, bruh, why do I gotta keep going to the shop? This is actually the worst. This is actually the worst. And they fixed that, so that's actually pretty nice. Um, easy easy stuff right there um let's see improvements will be directed to the lobby when they tap the back button from the arena select team an issue where the player was directed to the hero general hero journal when they tap the back button from the hero journal will be fixed an adjustment will be made so that the notification dot that is displayed on the hero icon in the library or quick menu is not displayed yes let's just get rid of the notification dots for me on a lot of things uh i hate them i hate them uh i i like i get it after i go in there the first time let's just let's just get let's just get it gone an issue we're searching for friends or guild members uh the default text phrase in the enter nickname window did not disappear Okay, cool. An issue where when searching possible certain words, the censorship filter in this is in this game is ridiculous. Like literally, literally go to any chat channel and try to type in cheese. You can't you can't say cheese in game. I don't understand. Um, incorrect information that was displayed in Guild Wars uh, will be fixed, like me inting. Uh, all of those were not actually me losing. It was actually just incorrect information that was displayed. Um, adjustments will be made so the players are redirected to connections when they move to hero review from connections and then okay. Uh, improvements will be made so that the tutorial to obtain Aether will be opened when you enter connections. Fantastic. Get yourself that Aether. Um, adjustments will be made so that if the notifications and the settings are not turned on, then players won't be able to turn night notifications on. What? Anyways, an issue where the screens were displayed incorrectly when you enter hero details on the Galaxy Fold or iPad will be fixed. Uh, so those of you who have an iPad, you you got this now. You're you're fixed. Okay. Hall of Trials weekly reward distribution error. We're gonna be getting those uh, those things in our in our mail. Literally first person background pog. Very wholesome. Thank you, Zaffy. Um, you guys, you guys know you're breathtaking. I appreciate the one extra mola a week, but I hope you're not thinking this solves all the mola problems. As I, uh, let's take it for what it is, man. Let's take it for what it is. Epic seven, uh, hashtag S Z B R five Q, um, uh, baby steps, homie, baby steps. Uh, okay. So let's see what else they've got going on because there's always more stuff and more information, right? So we're going to go to, uh, let's open this in new tab. Let's see what events they've got going on in here. Um, uh, updated content, Lydica drop rate, Twitch live stream break. Is that actually, is that actually it? Um, update info. 
uh, new artifact, no buffs or anything along those lines. Uh, but with that said, we're going to go over to the new hero preview. Um, we're going to take a look at this. Um, they premiered this earlier today, um, but let's talk about this, okay? I'm going to turn this down a little bit for you guys on the YouTubes. I like the mouse aesthetic, honestly, and the goggles. So everybody thought Dragon Waifu, everybody thought a bunch of other stuff. Now, um... I like this, I like this mouse, right? This giant mouse. Uh, big, big fan of this. Kind of interesting. It's, it's neat that they're kind of coming outside of, you know, their normal every, everything else. Um, I like diversity in characters, right? Uh, a lot of people, not the biggest fan of the design from what I'd seen earlier, um, I do kind of wish that maybe she was kind of like, uh, if you play League of Legends, right? Um, it, like she was like a new new, right? Where the unit was actually two units and she maybe rode on his back. I think that kind of would have been kind of cool, but, um, yeah, it's, it's all right. You know, it's, it's an interesting character. I like that they do kind of jump outside of the box sometimes, right? So going into, into the character, right? Okay. So she's got the same stat line as uh, fire Ravi, right? Um, Effect resist imprint, critical hit chance, self imprint. Now, critical hit chance imprint, self imprint is really huge on almost any character that it comes on, right? Because critical hit chance, one of the harder things to, to get, right? Not only that, but obviously if you do have critical hit chance as an imprint, it allows you, it allows you the flexibility to, to really put your other substats into other various things, right? Um, she has a lot of base health. Her speed at a 102 is not super fast, right? Uh, 102 is a little on the slow speed. She is an ice warrior. So in before, a lot of people are like, oh, hey, ice meta, you know, oh man, just what we need, another ice unit, uh, another ice unit. Oh man, just ice, ice, ice. Um, but I do think that, uh, it's interesting because there's not a lot of, uh, at the moment currently in the meta, right? There's not a ton of ice DPS. It is SSB. Uh, so whenever I see people talking about ice meta, I'm like, you mean Crow DN, uh, SSB and, and dizzy that's that's pretty much about it, right? Not only that, but we haven't really gotten an uh, ice unit in a, a hot minute, actually. So I actually don't mind this character. Um, base attack, real low. Really doesn't matter though, because all of her skills are going to skill off, are gonna be based off of caster's max health, uh, off of, yeah, caster's max health. So she's going to be an ice Alencia. Um, which is, is interesting. She's actually the second person in the game to have a party wide increased critical hit resistance. Um, this is actually real big. Not only that, but it also grants herself immunity for two turns. Um, this is damage is dealt based off of her max health. So this is going to be really, really strong. Uh, you are going to want to build her like an Alencia, right? And we're going to see what the modifiers are after the patch, obviously. Um, so I'm holding a little bit of my judgment until we see what the modifiers are. Um, but 
you're going to want to build her very much like you would an Alencia. You are going to want to build her like an, a Tywin, um, an A-Ravi, right? Where she's going to be really extra hefty when it comes to the HP. Um, so this is going to be kind of interesting. It's going to be a four turn cooldown. Um, critical hit resistance is real big, right? She's going to be the second. One of the big reasons why DN is actually real strong too is because of the critical hit resistance. Now, granted, it is only a 50% chance, but uh, isn't everything that's not 100% 50-50 anyways? And it's never going to actually stop a critical hit when you actually want it to to stop a critical hit. But that aside, it also grants her immunity, which is real big as well, I think. Um, immunity is real big. Uh, the problem is, is that you are gonna have to watch out for Basar, Broman, uh, Mui is gonna be able to strip this, Alensi is gonna be able to strip this. There's a lot of strip in the game right now. So you're gonna have to be very careful of when you when you drop this, right? Uh, but you know what? Hey, I will, I'll take it. I will, I will take it. I like the I like the high five that they that they drop at each other. Boom! High fives. Now, see, here's here's one of the places where, and they showed this actually. So here's one of the places where critical hit reduction, critical hit chance reduction is huge, right? Because you are going to have a 50% chance to just hard stop an Arbiter Vildred coming back. Um, and this is actually one of the things, like, if I don't want to Blood Moon Haste against an Arby, right? Uh, bringing, like, an Arius Adamant defense buff with DN for critical hit resistance um, really has a big chance to make their DPS absolutely neutered, right? And I think that that's a big thing um that is going to be going on i think that like for rta right they they like longer games um sure the people watching don't necessarily always like longer games but i feel like they want it to be a little bit more played out the problem with longer games that get played out is there's more rng factors right which not everybody enjoys okay so her s2 uh and this is foosh and this is actually pretty interesting right here because this is a single target three turn cooldown that penetrates the enemy's defense by 30 percent now when the caster is stacked with five focus this consumes all focus penetrates the defense by an additional 20 percent and resets the cooldown of foosh this is real big now i want to see how much damage like what the modifiers are on this because like if the modifiers are huge and it only has three skill ups and it's all damage based um if the modifiers are huge it's gonna be real big right i think that that's gonna be it's gonna be real strong and you're gonna want to kind of like it'll be interesting to see how how people use this right uh, because maybe sometimes you don't want to uh, use it right away. Maybe you want to like back to back it. Uh, maybe and the nice thing here too, right, is it has a 10 soul soul burn that increases damage dealt. So this might just straight up one shot things with the soul burn and 10 souls uh, is like next to nothing, man. It is. Uh, that's why a Tywin is so strong because you can just boom and then you can follow up right away on the next turn uh with with this ability right again so she's gonna be very high damage i think uh not only this okay but so a lot of people really don't like the tank meta you know tanking down getting just don't like bunkered behind an Aries adamant this is actually going to help against that um so this she not only has mitigation in her kit but i also think that she is going to be a potential tank breaker with the de with the defense pen here um that's going to be huge and the fact too that depending on how much um how much damage that this does 
Um, this could be very, very strong in going for those tank bricks, going for that like last tap on a unit. Um, I think that this could be a very strong ability, but again, we don't really necessarily know until the modifiers come out, right? Because like this isn't, they're not showing us too much here. Uh, and we don't know because this is on a miss, right? So this is doing 3,200 damage on a miss. That does not take into account the C damage modifications on her uh, her HP scaling modifier on her S2, right? Um, so this right here, I feel like a lot of people are going to look at this immediately and be like, bro, she only did like 3,200 damage with her S2 um, on a Rylet. Like that's not really that great. Uh, but you have to take into account that when you miss, that is... Uh, is she full? Fo yeah, she's full focus on this one as well. They showed because you got the three turn cooldown or three turn decrease here, but um, they don't re yeah, you gotta like take miss into account because when you miss C damage, everything like that is just kind of out the window. So it would be good to see this. I don't think they show it on, yeah, they don't show it on an actual hit, right. Um, so we'll have to see what that is. I think that that would be, um, real big in going to understand just how much she's going to be able to do there. Now her S1, this is really, really solid. Um, this is going to acquire focus damage dealt proportional to her health. Uh, this is going to increase her combat readiness by 20% when you have this at plus four. Uh, so that's already going to help mitigate some of her low base speed, right? So her base speed is 102. With this right here on just her S1, this is going to be real big. Actually, if you run her on a counter set, big brain here, whenever she counters, she's just going to push herself forward, right? Not only that, but you could run her on, uh, let's say, potentially a Durandal. Uh, so you're going to be cycling a lot of turns. You're going to be getting a lot of S2s off. You're going to be getting those S3 cycling. Um, you're going to be getting the focus. I think that that's actually uh, kind of interesting, right? And obviously it doesn't say that it doesn't work with uh, counter or dual attacks. So this is going to be real big. One of the things that I like a lot about characters that have that increased combat readiness on their S1 is that you can almost kind of just take that into account when you kind of look at how they speed, how they move. Uh, any sort of dual attacks are just gonna benefit this character exponentially. Um, three unity set uh, show. That's, that's what this is gonna be. Three unity sets, uh, dual attacks all over the place. Um, it's going to be OP, OP, right? But I do think that this is going to be actually pretty good. It'll be good to see what her uh, modifier scaling is uh, and go from there, right? Now, again, we don't really know how much C damage she has here, but you can see that she does have almost 24k hit points in this screen right here now you might not be able to see this at home just because i'm probably in the way but if you watch this video you'll see that she that she does have t almost 24k hit points uh and if you go back here you can we hit for about 4,000 damage right um so Again, we don't know how much C damage is here because much like Alencia, right, your modifiers, your HP scaling modifiers work exponentially higher off of increased critical hit damage. So they're probably not rocking 350 C damage uh, and 24K hit points on this character, right? Uh, so 
yeah, I think that it'll be it'll be nice to see. I don't think that it's going to do a ton of damage on the S1 just because it also has the CR manipulation forward. Now that is going to get stopped by restrict. And are we going to potentially see restricts in the future? Um, I don't think it's outside of the realm of possibility that we will see potentially some more strips in the future as well or not strips, but um, restricts. Uh, slow down is also going to be a big pain in the butt, although this CR manipulation, I do believe, bypasses speed in general. But um, correct me in the comment section or in chat if I am wrong on that one. But anyways, the, with that being said, I do think that we also don't know the stats, obviously, on the Broman. Uh, and for a warrior, I think that that kind of damage on an S1 that's not literally just built for just balls to the wall C damage. Uh, this is actually pretty respectable damage, right? Not only that, but I mean, she killed him. So what's what's better than just, just getting dead, okay? So now, much like every other character that is re in introduced and every character that they put onto uh, a banner now, they she's going to come with an artifact, right? Now, this artifact is interesting and somebody brought this up in chat when we were talking about it when they we were first watching the premiere right is that they kind of just started adding of like stats to artifacts now this has an increased 20 percent effect resist that's baseline i think that that's actually really good um there's a lot of cc characters that are out now mui um you know, you still have your Bassars, you have your Bromans, you've got your Dizzies, everything like that. Now, she does have debuff immunity on her S3, right? But one of the big things is, is that you don't want to get Broman stripped and silenced on your first turn. You don't want to get Bassar stripped and pushed back on your first turn. You don't want to get Abyssal crowned on a turn that you don't have that debuff immunity. So having increased effect resist is really good. Now, it also gives you 8 to 16% increased combat readiness when you suffer a non-critical hit. Now, that works very well with her S3, right? But here's my thing. There's so many other warrior artifacts that you can use on her. You could use Draco Plate. You could just use a Durandal. You could use a Sigurd Scythe because she's going to be lapping and doing a bunch of damage for the heals. Uh, there's a lot of other things that you can that you can use on this character instead of this artifact. Now, I do think that you know that's it's not bad, right? I do feel like if you were going to use this, uh, obviously, 16% is better than than 8%, but that's just because well basic math right and i think that um it has its applications but i also think that there are a bit better artifacts out there now somebody in chat did just say just para warriors bait with dn and done and you could absolutely do that this will also potentially help with other warriors cutting in front of other people um but we'll see how it goes i personally don't think that i would run this on her uh but yeah we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes i'm sure i'll get one while i'm pulling for her right
Now, I like I said, I mean, I think overall that the character is good. Do I think this character is meta breaking? Absolutely not really. Do I think that as a, a water DPS that she is going to be very, very good? Absolutely. I think that she's actually going to be really good at the fire expedition as well because of the because of the CR push. Right. Um, so I think that that's going to be a really big thing as well. Uh, now, I do think that we have some time before the next limited. I think we have some time before the next new unit where we are getting more Molagoras, um, but I do think that this unit is much like an Alencia where if you are going to go for her, then you are going to want to go full in, right? Um, but there is that. But that's it for these patch notes. I will have a little bit more of an in-depth character guide uh, coming out later today after I kind of digest a little bit and uh, kind of go over in my head like what sets, who to use her with, things like that. Um, but uh, for that, uh, I'm done with the patch notes. I think I'm going to start doing these live on uh wednesday mornings uh live over on twitch so if you guys do want to see these live get in on here in the chat watch the doggo cam you can follow me over on uh twitch but if you haven't yet and you would like to uh go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification over on youtube uh but if you don't want to you don't have to because i'm not your real dad uh but you know what if you want me to be your adopted dad well uh, we can do that probably maybe but i'll just tell you to get a job and not touch my thermostat but for the uh, otherwise, anyways, I appreciate everything you guys always do. And I will catch you guys on the next one later today. Um, yeah, look forward to more stuff in the future and our eventual two year run up stuff. Uh, but this character will be coming next week and I will catch you guys on the next one. Take it easy, homies. Peace. Ow,